All right. What's up, everyone? I hope uh, this time is good for you and you're excited. Um, I've got some cool stuff I want to share. Uh, and anytime during this talk here, feel free to post a question. Uh, there's a chat room that is just next to the video. Um, I just recently actually released a course on Pluralsight, which is all about the latest and greatest features in Tableau 10. And that actually aligned really well with a lot of the questions I got. I got over 40 questions or submissions on what you wanted to know. And I won't be able to cover all of it, but I think I'm going to get the bulk of it here today. Um, so thanks for joining me first off and let's get started. I'm going to switch over and this will be an interactive presentation. You'll always have a shot of me. And you'll also have uh, screenshots and other things that I'm gonna show as well as live demos. So again, anytime you have a question, feel free to post it in there and let's get started. Okay, cool. You should be seeing some slides now. And on here, the first thing I wanna do is just kind of give you an overview about the session today. There are four different areas we're gonna cover. The first are the user interface updates, and there's a lot of them. Uh, I'll just go over them briefly, but in general, just know that the UI is gorgeous now. Uh, it actually makes the old one feel, it's almost like when you get the HD TV and you have the standard deaf TV in the other room and it looks really bad. That's kind of how I feel now, maybe that's bad, but. Um, I, I, I love the product uh, in, in every way, and now I love it even more because the UI is just, just beautiful. Um, I'm also going to talk about preparing your data. There's some really great updates here. I think things that are, I mean, man, I, I don't even know how to describe how exciting it is. You'll, you'll hear the passion and excitement coming through, but we'll talk about preparing your data. Then we'll get into analyzing your data, right? So actually making visualizations and some of the new things you can do in there. And then lastly, we'll talk about sharing your insights, which generally is a way of talking about Tableau Server. I'm going to use Tableau Online to demo this here. And again, there I've been a server guy since day one, and I think there's some really great improvements here that are going to make this even more powerful for you. Okay, so without further ado, let's get going. User interface updates. Now, in Tableau 10, there's five different areas that are updated. There's the iconography, so all the different icons and everything, the typography, the colors, the actual colors in the viz, defaults, and by that I mean workbook defaults. There's a new thing where you can specify like the font and uh, colors of titles and things like that throughout an entire workbook in the formatting, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like here. And that's a long overdue feature. Um, I'm sure anyone that's been working in Tableau long enough knows that that's actually where you spend the bulk of your time is in formatting. So this is gonna help you uh, go pretty far in, in that front. And then lastly are just the titles. Titles are now shown by default and they're beautiful and they sit right within your viz and actually like I feel like I want to have a title in my viz now. Typically what I would do is make the viz and then hide the title and then just put a piece of text and kind of align it how I want. But now they're just there and they just, they, they work. So let's take a look at this. First, I'm gonna show you a viz and this is in 9.3. And again, it's, it's great, it works, it's probably very familiar to you. We'll actually go build this viz in a second here. Um, and I'm gonna switch over to Tableau 10, just kind of do a fade into Tableau 10 and show you what that looks like. So the same viz in Tableau 10, you can see it's a lot fresher. All right, let's go back and it looks great. This is the Mac version, by the way, and here's the new version. So a lot cleaner. You can see the icons are really clean up top here. Still just as much actual information and you know things that you can do, so they didn't remove things. Just a lot more spacious, I feel, and easier to click on. Then the data window, you can see the updated fonts. I really like how subtle the separators are between the actual uh, panes, the dimensions, measures, and parameters. The colors being used here, this is the default color palette and it just works. It's not that bright Crayola crayon color that, that we're used to seeing. Uh, it's something that I think will save you a lot of time when you're, when you're just using color um, you know, in a way like this to show uh, divergence between measures or between um, elements. And then of course there's your title right there and even show me got an update. So I like it, I like it a lot. Uh, in fact, uh, <laughs> I made a comment um, to Francois about this when we were just testing in beta that it hurts my eyes to go back because this one is so beautiful and they've done a great job. So, so kudos to the team. Now, one thing I wanted to call out and I saw this on one of their blog posts is really cool is the difference between the colors in 9.3 and in 10. And 
I mean, this is just a stark difference, right? You can see how clearly uh, the ones on the left just feel so so saturated and bright and probably not great for your viz. Uh, if you study or you know think about how to use color and all that, just super super bright colors often detract from the meaning. Um, so here, you know, with version 10, they're just a lot more subtle and this is the default color palette. So it works, works really well. So the new workbook formatting is what you can see here. And if I were to go to format and workbook, you'd see on the left, what I get is this, uh, section where I can set up a font and style for everything, every, you know, piece of text, or I can go down into the individual elements. When I choose all, I can change the font like this and I can change the color. And when I go into the individual ones, like the story titles or the worksheet titles, I can also set things like bold, underline, or italic. Then there's your titles. They pop up immediately. You just double click on them, type whatever you want, or it defaults to the name of the sheet. And it is, again, it sits, it sits there and it's really great. And I, I, I actually use them now, so that's nice. Okay, so step one, uh, or first demo, we're gonna have four demos, one for each kind of section here. We're gonna take a look at the user interface updates in Tableau. Then we're going to recreate that scatter plot, if I can remember how to do it. And then we're gonna make a mobile device layout. So this is something too that's new in Tableau 10. And it's something that, I mean, even it's only been a couple of weeks, I've done a couple of makeover Mondays. And every now it's like every time I make a viz, I make a mobile layout because rarely does the viz I make fit you know, naturally, beautifully when it shrinks down like that, if you set to automatic sizing. I know people say don't do automatic sizing. Um, I, I, I don't know, it, to me that's almost like the responsive way you'd wanna make it, uh, but of course it just doesn't, doesn't work out all the time. So I love this now and uh, let's switch over to Tableau and see it in action. Okay, so here I am in Tableau 10 and again, just the default page you can see it, it looks very muted and this connect to data stands out much more than it did before. All the menus and everything, all the icons and, and typography is just, just simple and easy. And the things that you know you want to do or the next steps the Tableau kind of wants to guide you towards are just jumping out, such as this one here. So let's recreate that scatter plot. I'm gonna click connect to data and I'm gonna choose the sample superstore. Maybe. There it goes, it's already hooked up and you should be able to follow along uh, with this as well. And if I recall, this uh, was a scatter plot, so we need two measures. And this one, very classic Tableau demo, let's do sales and profit. And we can do something here with customer name, we can drag that onto detail and then drag, is it segment? Yeah, we can drag customer segment on to color, so you can kind of see that. So notice the colors are already you know clean and nice, a bit more subtle than before. I can click on that and click edit colors and you can see that I have basically new color palettes and then you have a lot of other things down here uh, like the classic ones and then I really like, where is it, the green and gold one. Yeah, I really like this one too. So there's some down here that I, I think are new that are uh, really nice um, and they're just built in. So that's what the new color palette looks like. If I were to change this to circles instead, and then let's say, I don't know, size by profit ratio, let's see what you get there. And you can kind of, you know, do the typical thing where you can highlight them and all that. Uh, maybe let's put a little bit of a transparency here. And I kind of, I kind of like that. Okay, much better. Now, instead of coloring by just the, the segment here, I wanna use a new feature, which is the cluster analysis. And I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but I just wanna show you how easy this is. So this was demoed at uh, Tableau conference last time. Um, one second, let me just check, good to go. And it was really great. I mean, it, it basically creates clusters, which is kind of like this classic statistical uh, algorithm that you'd run to find like uh, cohorts in a data set like this. And so here what I can do, let me just get rid of segment from color. I can drag cluster on and just like all the other ones, you know, if I wanted to do a box plot or anything else, I get this, this menu here and I create my cluster and it automatically defaulted to, looks like what, three clusters, and it used all of the variables that I have in my viz, or all the measures, essentially. So if I wanted to change that, I don't know, to five or something like that, I can do that. 
I think automatic is probably a better <laughs> option because unless you know what's going on with the clustering, there's probably a reason why I chose three. And then of course, if you want to change this at all, you can say, you know what, I only care about uh, sales and profit ratio or something. You can change it and you can see how a couple of them updated there. So once I have my clusters, I believe, let me recall if I know how to do it right. Um, I can actually describe the clusters. Yep, if I right click on it and say describe, I get the actual kind of diagnostics and all the inputs and uh, all the different clusters and, and, and uh, some of the stats there. So if you're a stats geek and I got a few questions on this, here is some, some more information about that. And then you can kind of go down into the cluster model statistics and dig deeper. I, like most things in Tableau or most, I shouldn't say most, uh, uh, statistical features like this or more advanced analytical features. I think it's it's a great entry level type thing, um, just like forecasting. And I think it, I think they're good. But of course, if you're uh, well versed in something like R or SPSS or SAS or whatever, then you know of course you probably have a more advanced way or a more specific way. Like maybe you want to fit the right model and figure that all out before you just assume the software knows. But for simple type cluster analysis it doesn't get any easier than that. Okay, so that is kind of the tour of the UI and the scatter plot and using the cluster analysis. Now let's actually build our mobile version of this. So this happens um, on, the, on the actual uh, dashboard area. And see, right now it's already size. I have, a, I have a small screen here to make it easier for you. But let's say I have this viz and I'm doing automatic and it looks fine. Or, or let's say maybe I wanna do on uh, an embedded blog or let me see what's the small one. Nope, that's not it. Let's do 650 there or 500. My screen is so tiny. Okay, so let's say this is like our normal size. It's good to go. Then I, ca I can add device preview here and choose my device. I I've not really, I don't know, I guess it depends how big you, you develop your things. Most of the visits I do are made for the web and they're fairly compact. So I never really think about adding a tablet one, but the phone one happens a lot. And you can see what, what I did there is I clicked on device type of phone and it shows generic phone. I can choose other models here. Uh, happy to see my Android uh, phones getting some love, but you can see what it did. It drew this kind of black box around it and I can click on the right, add phone layout. So now I have my default layout and my phone layout. And you can see it's drawing that box around it. And basically what would happen is this is what the person would see. They would have to scroll horizontally, which is horrible. We Nobody ever wants to scroll horizontally. Just know that. Um, now I can do things here. I can say default. I can say fit all. Or I can say fit width which kind of then fits the whole, the whole thing or whatever. It kind of makes it, make it, then I can mess with the, the height here if I wanted to change this down to 500. You know, kind of adjusts that way. I'm not a fan of either of these. In, in all of my testing, I haven't found them to really work that well. Uh, but what I do is I choose fit width and then I drag things around and move them. So this is kind of the cool thing. So for the layout, I'm gonna choose custom and I'm gonna drag the clusters to the bottom and I'm gonna drag profit ratio maybe next to that one. And I can you know drag that up, something like that. So now what'll happen, and if I were to change the height here to, I don't know how tall this thing is, 667, so. So now what would happen is when a person hits this viz, it would look like this on the phone. Now, if I click back on my default layout, you'll see what it normally looks like. And then if I click on my phone layout, you can see essentially the main thing that I use this for is rearranging uh, things that normally live next to each other and putting them down below so that way you can scroll on your phone and it kind of makes sense, it's easy. So that is this first piece, the UI update, and just a couple little things that you can do here, including one of my features, which now it really is just an essential feature for me, is this phone formatting. I, I really don't think it makes sense to publish a viz that doesn't have this because a lot of people view stuff on mobile. And in fact, a lot of times it's the majority or it's at least more than desktop. So, all right, let's switch back to the presentation and we'll keep going on our journey here. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the new data prep features. And the data prep features I love because I'm a data geek. And the first one we'll talk about is connecting to Google Sheets, hallelujah. 
and joining across databases. I'll show you a little bit about what's different there. And then combining queries with union. I'm gonna show you how this works, but I'm not gonna actually demo it. Okay, first things first, connecting to Google Sheets. There have been a number of people and some friends of mine that have created hacks for this. I think I tried to create one one day, but it always required your, your sheet to either be published to the web, meaning anybody in the world could see it, not good for sensitive data. Um, and, and, and also that, you know, you couldn't use, uh, it, that you couldn't use any of the security features that were built into it. So now you can connect directly to it. It's a live connection. So it doesn't have to do an extract and it does use OAuth for security. So meaning that it'll, it'll use your credentials when you actually connect to it. Now, no pivot tables can be present and you can't have any errors like a pound NA formula error. So if you do have formulas or anything like that, uh, which are fine, just make sure that you kind of encapsulate them in error handling. So that way they, they return a blank or some value that isn't an actual error. Because in my testing, and maybe this will be improved in 10.1 um, or a, 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 a small maintenance release, um, it, it would actually give you an error like, hey, can't connect, instead of saying, hey, go fix that. So uh, be aware of that when you're using the Google Sheets connector. But one of the beautiful things about this is now your users can have direct input into a viz through a Google Sheet, and you don't have to download, update, republish, or any of that. It just goes live. So I, I love, love, love this new feature. This is probably my favorite one out of out of everything in terms of the like capabilities. So the way it works is pretty straightforward. You go connect to data, click more, then Google Sheets, enter your username, enter your password, enter the two-factor two authentication code, which we all have, right? Yes, yes, you need it, you do. Then you get to pick your Google Sheet and bam, you've got data. So really straightforward. It really doesn't get simpler. And I'll go back and show you kind of how to do this. There is one caveat here and I'll show you exactly what that is when we open it up. The next thing I wanna talk about is joining across databases. So a cross database join in Tableau terms. And the way this was done before is you had to bring in the different data sources and blend them in the viz itself, right? Meaning the join happened in the viz, not prior to you actually wanting to visualize the data. So data blending had its limitations. For one, it was inefficient because it's bringing in all this data, then blending, then filtering and doing all that, which created a lot of slowness. There was an update, I think version nine or one of the eight dot releases where they no longer required the join key, like an ID field to be in the viz, which, which was great because that helped a lot, but it still, still wasn't great. And then you have this uh, limited calculation options. There were all these uh, problems about if if one of the uh, sources didn't didn't support it, then it wouldn't work and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that that actually still exists. But uh, but these were kind of the data blending issues that you saw. Now in Tableau 10, the join happens before you get into the viz side of things. So it happens in the data prep window, and I'll show you what this looks like here in a second. So from some tips I have um, are to make sure that you use matching data types. So if you have two ID fields and you're joining on them, make sure that they're both the same data type, whether that's alphanumeric, numeric, um, or date value or whatever. Uh, that's really just gonna help here because otherwise you may get, may get errors. Also, no cubes or, or extract only sources are allowed yet. Um, and it, the simple way to know is that when you try to do the cross database drawing, you, the things you can see, you can do, and if it's not there, you can't do it. So uh, no cubes like analysis services cubes uh, or extract only sources, which would be like Google Analytics or Salesforce. Now calculations need to work on all sources. So this actually is just like before where if you have a count distinct, let's say, uh, both, uh, both data sources in this cross database drawing need to support that in order for it to work. And honestly, in my testing, I feel like this is really good when you use like sources. So if you have two SQL databases, great. If you have two Excel files, great. And I, the re, maybe maybe it's just because I noticed some slowness and just it, it wasn't great. And, and maybe it'll be improved um, as the you know maintenance releases and then ten point one comes out. But for now, I would I would recommend that you know using like sources are going to give you your best results. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you combining queries with union, and, and this won't be demoed, but I'll show you the screenshots of what it looks like. And the idea here, if you're not familiar, in SQL, and when you're writing stuff in databases, this is a standard that's been around for a number of years, 
and you can combine multiple data sets that are identical. So the common case, and I'll just show you what it looks like here, is imagine if you had exports from a CRM of sales data, and that data was partitioned by year. So maybe you didn't want the ginormous data set of every year, you just wanted separate years in separate files. That's fine. And you know, if you're a Bash shell scripting monkey like me, you know that there's actually just a couple of quick commands that would do this and you'd be good to go. But in Tableau, it's nice because you can, you don't have to deal with all that. You can just connect to one of them and then drag the other ones on and create a union query. Now, one of the features that got dropped in the beta that I'm bummed about, which I hope is back in 10.1, I haven't seen that beta yet, I just got the email, so maybe it's back, is the wildcard match. So right now, what you have to do is drag each file on individually, and the wildcard match was a separate way of creating a union that would say, hey, anything like in this, CS in this directory that's a CSV file, use that as a part of my union. And the reason that's cool is because then if you get a new file, let's say in this example here, 2014 comes out, you could drop 2014 into that directory, go refresh your viz and it would automatically show up. It would automatically pull the data in. Now I did notice in my testing that it pulling in the new file was, was a little quirky. It didn't always work. And I couldn't actually quite nail down the exact scenario where it did versus where it didn't. It seemed to be a little sporadic. So maybe that's why it didn't get released with 10 and, and hopefully it's coming. Um, so this is how you do a union query. Once you've done that, it looks kind of like a stack of cards and that represents basically all the files being connected. Now some tips for unions are use matching column names. If you don't have all matching column names throughout your files, you're gonna have uh, separate fields created. And if those actually are the same field, then you'll have to merge them back. So just try to make sure your data coming in is clean. Um, that's, I mean, just a general tip, but in this case, it'll save you a, a lot of headaches um, trying to merge things and, and deal with all that. And again, use matching data types. If let's say an ID field is supposed to be uh, a number and there's one in there that's a, that has a, a, a space in it, let's say, and then Tableau reads that, it's gonna treat it as a string and then that could mess up everything else in terms of how you use that data later on. So make sure your data types are good and the data is clean coming in. I recommend also keeping the files together. So one thing I like to do is, you know, it's common, a lot of places I've been, a lot of clients, they have like a folder on a network share which has all the kind of uh, extracts from their CRM system or whatever. And you know, it's that's okay, that's cool. But, and then when you have like a like set of files, let's say the exact, you know, years of sales from this system, Keep them in their own folder. I really like this idea because then it's just easy when you connect from Tableau to see them and you're not scrolling through say hundreds or thousands of files and trying to find the right ones. Also, if and when that wildcard match thing comes back, this will actually help with that a lot. So keep that and keep the files together. And then when you're done, you get this new variable, uh, this new field in Tableau called table name, and you can use that to do a data quality check. Uh, in my Tableau course on Pluralsight, what I show you actually is how to check by year. So imagine if uh, every year is separated into a separate file, and you bring that data in, and it's all union together, and you drag the table name on the rows, and then the year on top. So you have like all the tables with the year and the name, and then all, all the data for, for the different years. You can just drag on a measure like number of records and see if there's anything that doesn't match. If there's any data in a year for from a file that shouldn't be there. So this table name field is actually quite useful when kind of setting up your data sources. All right, demo number two. We're gonna connect to a local Excel file and then cross join to a Google Sheet. Really straightforward, right? We'll create a simple viz too, just to show you kind of what it looks like. So back over here in Tableau, I'm gonna create a new tab and I'm gonna connect to data. What did I say? Excel file, then Google Sheet. So first I'm gonna connect to an Excel file. If my computer will let me. And I'm gonna connect to this Cogsley Services Sales Data US. I'll click open. I can hear my hard drive spinning in the background. And now here is where you actually create the new cross database join. So first I'll go ahead and drag the sales on here. 
By the way, there's the new union thing, the new union button to create a union. I think that was actually released in 9.3. Um, now to add the uh, Google Sheet, I'll click add. And, and again, here's where you see certain things like Google Analytics uh, actually grayed out because you can't use those yet to do this kind of a cross database join. So, but I can use a Google Sheet. So I'll click on Google Sheets. I'll go ahead and log in. Click OK, click Allow. And now I wanna pull in my sales quotas. Okay, here's the gotcha that I wanna mention. So this account, Cogs at Cogswell Gmail, actually has access to another folder that I gave it access to. And it, that folder has dozens of actual files in there. They're owned by me, by, by a different account though. And I had to actually go to that file and paste in the URL, meaning I couldn't search for it here even though it's technically in my drive. Um, so I have submitted that to the dev team. I'm wondering maybe that'll be a, a dot release or maybe it's intentional, I don't know. But if somebody shares a folder with you and it's you, you say add to my drive, you still have to actually go to the file and copy the URL and paste the URL in here. After you do that, it shows up just like these ones here. But in the initial, if you just wanna search for it, it's not gonna find it. Okay, so once I get my sales quotas, I click connect. Oh no. This is probably the, the same error that was happening before. Let me take a, one more shot. Sales quotas, connect. Hey, there we go, okay, cool. So I'm gonna join these data sets on state and I'm gonna join using a left join. So I get all of my sales data and then the matching stuff from the Google Sheet, customer state. And you can see I've got data down there. So good to go. And if I scroll over to the right, you can see where I have the additional data points. And they're also in orange, just like you would see for a blend. All right, so now if I wanted to go create a new simple sheet, I can choose my one with multiple connections and I can drag my state on, drag my sale amount on, and then scroll down and drag my quota on. Now, because these are duplicated, uh, what I'm actually gonna do for quotas is do a max, so it shows like the, the max quota instead of having to sum that up you know, for every row because of the way the join works. Okay, so there you go, it's simple as that. And now what I can do is I could publish this, I could share it with other people, I can do all kinds of stuff with my data set that's combined, my cross database join and my Google Sheet. If somebody were to go update the Google Sheet and change, let's say the quota for here, I could refresh this viz and it would automatically update. So that's a huge, huge new feature. Okay, let's keep going. Move back to our slides and see what else we have. Now we're gonna do analyzing your data. So the more analytic features here. And I'm only gonna show a few, can't let, you know, uh, it's can't let the whole cat out of the bag here with my new course. But in here I have customizing territories, filtering across data sources. So we just learned how to join across data sources. Now we're gonna learn how to filter across data sources and how to highlight data with search. I actually think I took that out, but I can show it to you anyways. Cool, so customizing territories. Tableau 10 gives you the ability to create your own custom geographies without having to still have the underlying geography in there. Um, and you can actually aggregate it up. So it looks like this. Um, this is a sales territory that I built kind of arbitrarily. And notice that there's no state level data here. It's only the territory level. So I'll show you how to build this. Some simple use cases, of course, are sales territories. As I just showed you, any company I know that has sales uses sales, sales territories. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen one that they fit neatly into whatever you know the system wanted them to fit into, right? They're always custom. Um, then there's also things like viewing areas. I've done some work for clients where they have a, like a ad spends on, on TV and they wanna know viewing areas and they have their own kind of custom definition of it. Then of course there's kind of economics and politics in both areas where you wanna create your own custom kind of cohorts based on geography uh, for all kinds of different analysis that you wanna do. Now, filtering across data sources, or in Tableau terms, cross data source filtering, is something that I know a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time. Um, and let me show you, just show you what it looks like. Here are two different data sets, EU sales and US sales. And we'll build something similar, and, and I'll show you how it works. 
And on the right, I have a quick filter. And when I unchecked 2015, it actually removed it from both of my, my charts, which are using different data sources. The key thing there is I get to use a quick filter to do this. And before I would have to use a parameter. So this is a big improvement because quick filters are much uh, more expressive in terms of how you let your users interact with your data than parameters are. And they still can, can accomplish the same thing now. So I think this is gonna be a big change. I think a lot of people are gonna go refactor those dashboards and it'll actually save you a ton of calculations and probably speed things up uh, quite a bit. So some use cases here, anytime you have a common dimension, anytime you have a standard set of filters that you want applied, it also replaces those parameters, as I mentioned. Let's go into the demo. We're gonna create a map, create some custom territories, join the second data set, create another map, create a dashboard, then create a cross database filter. I'm gonna switch back over to Tableau and we'll get going. So here in Tableau, I already have my US sales, which I joined to my Google Sheet. And what I wanna do now is join well, first, let me just create the map, I guess. Let's start there. So I'm going to choose my sales data set, which has state in it. I'm going to double click that guy. And I'm just going to go and select them using the lasso tool. Let me shrink this down. There we go. So the lasso tool is your friend. Uh, you also, you don't have to use it, but for making custom territories, it often is a lot easier. So I choose that, and now I just select the states that I want in my territories. So let's say I want the West to be all of these guys here. To create the group, I just click on the paper clip like I normally would. And you can see it created the group over there. It already added it to the color shelf. Now, if I were to do it again, this time I'll do kind of the Midwest here. Somebody's probably in Texas right now watching going, this is not the Midwest, but just humor me for the, for the sense of, of illustration here. Now we'll do the Northeast group and Southeast, good to go, group. So I've created groups. This actually isn't really anything that special. Uh, I'm gonna bring my data window back and I can go ahead and edit this real quick just to make it make a little bit more sense. Alabama, Florida, Georgia, this would be Southeast. Arizona, California, Idaho, this would be West, Arkansas, Illinois, et cetera, this would be Midwest, Connecticut, Delaware, it would be Northeast. What's another? Oh, Colorado, let's drag Colorado to the Midwest. Okay, cool. So I hit that, we're good to go. Now they have nice names, I could even rename this field if I want. Sales, territories. Okay, and we're good to go. So I have something that is pretty legit, right? Now, here's the big thing, and let me just go ahead and actually change this to a filled map because I think it's just easier to, to visually understand what I'm doing. Now, let me take state and remove it. That is the magic right there, right? So before, like this would work. You could color code something based on a group now, but you couldn't remove state because what would happen is Tableau would say, hey, I no longer understand geocoding for this field. And you can see here, it even has a group with a geocoded uh, globe icon. So that's, that's kind of the new deal there. Now I can do something like drag sale amount onto label and it rolls it up to that level. You can do what I like doing often, not options, but map layers and I actually like getting rid of the map altogether. I like drawing shapes and I like maps, but I don't like seeing all the other crap that I don't, don't care about, all the other stuff, excuse me. Okay, so we'll call this US. Now we're gonna do one for the EU, and I'm gonna join to another data set, going into Excel, and I have one here for EU. Click open. Give the evil eye to my hard drive and let it spin. Okay, now here I'll drag sales on. So I have EU sales. Maybe. Good to go. Create a new sheet and I'm on the EU data set. Perfect, I have country. Double click this guy. And just like the other one, I'll choose a filled map. So you can kind of see that there and I can do the same thing. 
This one will be a bit quicker. So let's say we call this Western Europe. Call this Northern. And then we'll call this Eastern. I don't know why Italy would be considered Eastern. And we'll call that Central. So same idea. Now I'll drag country off. And I still have my geographies there. I can drag sale amount on to label. Good to go. Get my map layers and get rid of the map, except for the stuff I actually care about seeing. And we have essentially the same thing. I could go rename those, but I'll save you that. Call this EU. So we've got our custom territories here. We've done it for uh, Europe as well as the US. Uh, if you wanna count uh, the UK as Europe still, it's up to you guys. Um, I'll automatic size this new dashboard here. I want to show you now this cross database filter. First, I'll do the EU and the U US like that. Sorry, yep. And then I'm going to go, and I need to add a filter first off, right? So let's go up here, and these two data sets happen to have a common one of product category. They're you know from a fictitious company that has basically the same product lines in the EU as well as North America, or sorry, in, in the US for this data set here. So I do that there, I create a filter and it's straightforward, right? This is just like nothing new. But now I can click on it and choose apply to worksheet and say all using re related data sources. Now when I click on that, it has a new icon. And when I go back to the US one, look at that. It's, all, it's already there and it has the orange icon for kind of like a blend feel. I'm actually curious, did it add it? No, it didn't add it to the Superstore data set. So, okay. So now I have my cross database filter. Go to my viz, and if I were just to hide these a little bit, and let me click on this one and get my, come on, there we go, and get my filter, choose product category. So in theory, when I, whoops, when I click on one of these, it should affect all of them and it looks like it's working. So when I uncheck one of these product categories, it applies that filter to both. See that? So this, I think, is going to replace a lot of the stuff people have done with parameters and be more efficient and not have to have extra calculations that get out of sync or copying and pasting logic, all that. I think this is gonna be tremendous. Now, if you're wondering, well, the field doesn't match, I don't know, how do I know? Well, you can go, it's very similar to blending, and you can actually go to the edit relationships area and, and update that as well. I don't know why I can't see it here. Edit data source filters, publish a server. Assume referential integrity. Um, I don't know why I can't see that. All right, well, I'll have to follow up on that with you guys on a post. Um, it used to be there was in the beta anyways, there's a way to do edit, uh, edit relationships. And that was essentially what, how you would define a custom thing between them. So anyways, there you go. Now you've seen custom territories and you've also got the ability to do a cross database filter. The one thing um, that was on there was also the, the highlighter, the data highlighter. Um, that's in the course. I'm not going to cover it here. Apologize. Um, but because there's still a lot more to go. So let's jump back and continue on our journey. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm a Tableau Server guy. I've been a Tableau Server guy since day one, um, mostly because I come from kind of big corporations where we had enterprise BI solutions and there wasn't a such thing as uh, a BI tool that didn't have like a server component. So here, there are three new things I wanna talk about real quickly. Um, publishing to the web, authoring on the web, and subscribing users. So the first one is that with publishing to the web in Tableau 10, um, when you publish, it will automatically create extracts when it's required. And it also give you updates and things like if there's a IP whitelist guidance or a connection check and all that. So you have fewer times where you go to publish something and it let you publish it only to find out the data connection doesn't work or you needed to do this or the whitelist, blah, blah, blah. So there's all these issues going on. Um, some updates that are in here, it's a streamlined process now. I'll show you how you can actually kind of uh, hit it, kill two birds with one stone. And you can also schedule a data resource refresh on the time that you publish. So when you publish, you can actually set up the refresh schedule of a data source as well. Now, authoring on the web, 
I am thrilled about this. This is probably my second favorite feature. And that is that you can build dashboards from scratch directly on the web without needing Tableau Desktop. In fact, some one of the guys that was reviewing my Tableau 10 course on Pluralsight uh, gave, gave me feedback and said, how do I know that this is the web instead of desktop? So that's definitely where it's headed. And this is great for non-desktop users. You could imagine that you know, if you have a you know 50,000 person company, it doesn't make sense to buy a Tableau Desktop license for every single person. Apologies to my friends in the sales department, but it really doesn't make sense. Now, also tablet users. Tablet users are, I mean, this is actually a great use case. You know, what better way to see and understand your data than to literally be able to, to touch and feel it. And then anytime you're making quick edits, it's nice that you can edit the dashboard as well now. I mean, you're really just like one step away, and maybe it's in 10.1 where you can create a data source on, on, on server without having to do anything, and then you literally wouldn't need Tableau Desktop uh, for except for a few cases. Uh, not to say that everyone would, would you switch over, but you wouldn't have to have it. Okay, the last one, and this is funny. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's not the right word. I feel like this is something that people have been asking for since I started working with Tableau, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And that was the ability to, t to subscribe someone that isn't you to a viz. And the typical use case here is if you have um, a team dashboard and you need the whole team to be subscribed or you have an executive dashboard. Now I do contend that it is interesting that an executive would want this delivered in their email to add to the pile of email they already get but not have time to go to the web page and click two buttons and make sure they actually want it. But I get it. I've been in the, I've been in that seat and sometimes you just got to do it. And so this is how you can do it now in Tableau 10. All right, we're getting into the last demo here and we're going to publish a dashboard to the web. We're going to go edit that dashboard on the web and then we're going to subscribe another user. So let me switch back over to Tableau and we'll get going. So here I have my dashboard. Um, let's say I wanted to call this world wide sales uh, overview let's make this obnoxiously large bam cool okay i've got a viz straightforward enough right um and it works it does its thing so what i want to do now is i want to go publish this to the web so i'll call this sales overview and I'm going to go to server and publish workbook. It's gonna tell me, hey, you have this, this uh, connection, which probably should be an extract. I can publish it without the extract or I can click one button and say, create extract. Create extract. I've already done this once. I was prepared, sort of. So it'll create the extract. And now I will publish it again, or I'll click publish again. First off, you'll notice a new UI here as well. So this is a, a bit a bit nicer uh, looking process anyways. I can choose my project, I can give it uh, a name, say live demo, uh, I can tag it. Now I can choose the sheets that I want to publish right here, it's kind of nice. It even gives you a little hover. So this is, I mean, literally this is, I don't know, it's just like so much nicer now. Um, the permissions are the same as the project. Here's kind of the cool thing, data sources. Now what I can do is say, hey, this one here, I can publish that separately. Uh, none of these have the refresh ability, like I can't refresh them, but if I did, let's say this was a database connection, you'd see something on the right that would say, um, you know, uh, refresh this database or set up a refresh schedule. So I can publish the data source separately as well as publish a workbook all in the same shot. So it's kind of nice, saves you a couple clicks if you were gonna do that. Oh, and also show you what happens after you do that. So it's publishing it up now. Um, I have Tableau Online um, for my demo here. Uh, should be almost the identical experience to Tableau Server with the exception in case you have any custom configurations or anything on your server. All right, it's up in a new window here in a separate Tab. Let me see if I can drag that guy over. There you go. So publishing is complete. It did the data source as well as uh, the other the, uh, the the viz itself. 
Uh, here's the workbook. If I click back on default, you can see that live demo is in here. Now, let me do this actually. Let me go back just real quickly to show you what's going on in Tableau. Because by choosing to publish the data source separately, it actually, this is, I can't tell you how, how much, how happy this makes me. It automatically updated my connection to be based on the server connection now. So before, if you had done that, what you'd know is that you'd have to actually go uh, create a new connection to that same data source you just published a server and then replace the data source here. So it kind of did all that for you, which is really nice, especially if you use a lot of the shared data sources. So here on the server, uh, I can take a look at my dashboard. Let's take a look at the sales overview one. And you can see, you know, pretty straightforward. It works just like you think it would. I click edit and this is where I can actually change things. And this is where the new feature about being able to build dashboards. In fact, I can edit this dashboard. See how I can drag that and say, you know what? What if I wanted these guys to be next to each other like this? I can do that kind of a thing. So now you can build dashboards on the web and that's one that already exists. I can also build a new one. So of course I can build sheets just like I could before. So maybe I wanted to do something like Cogsley services, order date, and sale amount, then drop down month, call this sales by month. Let's create a new one, which is order histogram for lack of a better term. And here I wanna see if I click on quantity, I can click on show me and get the bin, the histogram essentially. And this also actually uses the, the custom width bar charts, which is kind of how you make those Merimekko charts uh, as well. Now I can create a new dashboard and drag that one on, drag this guy on. And then let's say I want that map on as well. There you go. So let me just resize this just so you guys can see it. So there you go. So now I can actually save this. And I was able to publish my viz, publish the data source as well, that then updated my connection in my workbook. Then I was able to go edit that dashboard and then create a whole new dashboard as well as a couple new viz right here all on server. The last step to show here is how to subscribe someone else. Uh, it's as easy as you could imagine. Uh, I click on the subscribe button as soon as it shows up and I choose subscribe others, click add, and we happen to have CEO Jill here and CEO Jill is now subscribed. So it's as easy as that. Um, you know, they can go manage their own preferences. You can change a subscription. You can edit things. You can do all that stuff right there on the web. Uh, one caveat, the user must already exist. So if you wanted to say, send this off to some random person that, you know, is a external and doesn't have an account, you'd have to create an account for them first. So you can't just subscribe anybody in the world. You would have to subscribe people that are users on your server. Okay. So that is all I have for demos and everything today. Uh, the last thing, I mentioned it a couple times, but my new course on Pluralsight covers everything that I just showed you today, plus it goes much deeper in depth on every one of those areas. Um, and you can go check it out on Pluralsight.com. Lastly, I have a few more minutes for questions. I see a couple in the chat. Uh, if you guys have anything else right now, let me just take a look and I will be right back. So the, the first question uh, from Charlie Hutchinson, Hutchison, um, is about the new UI and, and the extra white space and how some people don't like it. You know, um, my opinion, uh, I feel it's a bit more cluttered, uh, the old one, and harder to find things. I think for new people coming into Tableau, this is going to be a lot easier for them to really... Uh, to, to pick it up and to kind of just be be open to it. Um, I don't have a problem with it. I really like it. Um, I'm a fan of white space and I'm a fan of, of, uh, of the new UI. So the next one from M Flores, does the show me palette automatically hide 
when you move away from it or do you have to click again, click on it again to make it hide? I believe you have to click. So let me just double check. So here's show me and if I were to hover away from it, yeah, nothing's, what if I were to click on that? Nope, I have to click on it again. So when I nothing happens when I hover, uh, I have to click to show it and then click to hide it. Um, so I don't know, maybe that was an annoying feature before or something, but uh, that's how it works now. All right, so I appreciate your time uh, joining me today. Uh, you can email me at help at bensolens.com with any specific Tableau related questions or just data viz questions. Again, this information or a much deeper, broader uh, version of this is available on uh, my course on Pluralsight. And stay tuned for more on my website, bensolens.com. I'm going to be publishing uh, a, a lot of new tips, uh, probably at least once a week. So stay tuned for there, and I will see you online soon. Thanks.